All right, welcome to Quick Show. I am your host, Greg Matson, and in this episode, we are going to talk about critical race theory and the social justice gospel reaching Deseret Book. We will see the sympathies of those within Deseret Book for this type of a movement and how close we, we are coming already to a propagandized leftist type of a message that is going to be coming out, especially when it comes to race. James Jones, a member of the church and a podcaster, recently was asked to put together a, early last year, was asked to put together a, a course for the new program called Seek with Deseret Book. Now, if you're watching on video, you can see this right here. This is a snapshot of the Deseret Book uh, initiative. It's called Deseret Video. You'll see at the bottom here, it says Seek. And what they do is they go out and they, they uh, uh, move this here. So you can see a new courses that cultivate faith, right? And so James Jones was asked to do a course on racism, right? And on prejudice. And so this is a, a guy that has a very strong social justice type of a background. I don't think that he would argue with that at all. He has a very strong following in the church and he has sympathizers within Deseret Book that wanted him to produce a course on anti-racism, right? The brand of an Ibram Kendi type of leftist type of anti-racism. But he was held off apparently, and we've got some communication to show this through email. He was held off from uh, actually having the, co the, the, the course go live because of some of the comments that he made about President Holland and his speech, whether f famous or infamous, depending on how you look at it, I suppose, uh, from last August at BYU to the faculty there, where he, he focused on the doctrine of the family. Well, James Jones wasn't real happy about that. He criticized Elder Holland, and this is what gets him in trouble. Otherwise, it looks like this is moving forward. It looks like this is this, this course is going to be live on Deseret Book for the whole church, right? Here's the Facebook post that he did put up. He says, to condemn the expression of someone's immutable identity, and he's talking about queer individuals, in the name of Christ is satanic. He's referring to Elder Holland. There's a good chunk of Matthew 23 and a commandment, Exodus 27, about putting God's name on your BS. So that's what he says about Elder Holland's speech last year. And this apparently gets him into trouble to the point where, okay, they're not going to conflate this public persona of James Jones with a course that they're going to put onto Deseret Book. But that's not even the real problem. The problem, I guarantee you, is the content of the course itself and the tenets that it draws from. It will draw from hard, hard left Marxist critical theory type of principles and apply them to the prophet's words, right? Where, where President Nelson said that we need to get rid of all prejudice in the church and all racism. A, a very positive thing and a very good thing. But for many people, it is a single idea with a single solution. And that solution is leftism. That solution, solution is a Marxist-based approach. That is what Ibram Kendi does. That is what anti-racism really is all about. It, it, is, it is leftism clothed in a, a, an exterior of race. By the way, it can be very interesting going on to social media on, with some of these individuals in, and these groups. In the Facebook post that James Jones put up uh, criticizing Elder Holland and his speech last August. You can go through the replies there and you'll see some people that are in there. One of them, someone I've actually had correspondence with, one of them was the longtime host of the Maxwell Institute podcast. 
And in response to the criticism of Elder Holland, he simply says a one-word reply, which is, preach. Now, you can see here, we've got a snapshot. This is James Jones wrote an article about this whole event, right? Because he was upset that this got pulled from him uh, at Deseret Book and that he wasn't going to be able to get the course out there. But you can see here, if you're on the on video, you can see here where he's got a snapshot of DeseretBook.com and, and he's there at the lower left-hand side and on the bottom of his course it says, Coming Soon. The name of the course, which is great, right? I mean, the name of the course is great, Abandoning Attitudes and Actions of Prejudice. But in the course itself, and this is with Mr. Jones' own words, right? He criticizes the brethren for their prejudice. But the important thing to see here is that this type of a course is being championed and pushed, not just accepted, but championed and pushed at Deseret Book. And all of its tenets of critical race theory, which are racist and Marxist tenets, the criticism of the brethren, all of these things are, are a part of this. And yet, insiders at Deseret Book are wanting this to get out there. They believe that this message is important. Here's part of the article that uh, James Jones, Jones writes about his experience with this. And, and this will give you a little bit of an idea of where he's coming from. And, and you can see kind of, you can glean pretty easily a lot of what the, uh, the the content is in this course. He says, I'm not shocked about this happening, or in other words, the course being removed. He says, I'm disappointed, I'm frustrated, and I'm angry. I worked hard on that course. I took the task very seriously because I knew that this would be the first time explicitly anti-racist content. Remember, this is not, that doesn't mean fighting racism. That is something very specific, very branded. Okay, Explicitly anti-racist content was produced and distributed by Deseret Book or by the church. And if you don't think that's coming, I don't know what to tell you. Because the, the church is a very large organization, and you're going to find areas where this is going to come through. It's going to happen. And he, said, he throws this nugget in there, and I think this is important. I'm going to get back to this in a minute. But he says, this would likely be the first anti-racist education many members of the church received. And when we say anti-racist education, what we're really talking about is, is indoctrination into critical race theory, indoctrination into the social justice gospel. And I say gospel very on purpose because his following line is, let alone theologically based anti-racist education. I'm going to get back to that in a minute, but it has to do with liberation theology. There is, there is this thought in the church and, and, and in Christianity more broadly that the church, that Christianity must change. It is too white. It is, and, and what we mean by that is not there's too many white people in it. Right? It means it is, it is too based on salvation theology. It is too based on a personal relationship with a Savior who has died for your sins. And, and not enough on justice, a specific brand of justice. He says, content that I know is going to shift us more, his content, more into alignment with the church that we are supposed to be. Right? That is... That is the move, right? It is, we have got to make a change and, and push the church and make this change. The fully integrated and diversified church, he says, of the New Testament. So his idea is that Paul going around, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of putting words in his mouth here, but I think this is what he means. You know, Paul going around and bringing in the pagans and the Jews and all the others, right, in the, in the Greek, Greco-Roman world, and, and assimilating them together, which is what we want. That is what we want. That's what the church already does. That's what the church already does. But in his mind and in many, many other minds, even within the church, it doesn't. We are not truly Christian. And in regards to his communication with Deseret Book on why the course is removed, 
He says, look, number one, homophobia is far more offensive than being called a homophobe. So, hey, I didn't call anyone a homophobe. I'm just bringing up homophobia. That was in reference to Elder Holland. He said, two, none of the words I used were pejoratives, but descriptors. Okay, so whiteness and being white and, and calling the brethren a bunch of old white men born in the Jim Crow era, right? It, it, is, it, is, it is highly rebellious. I mean, you may disagree with them on things, but it is highly critical of the brethren. And he comes back and champions that over and over again. He's like, that's fine. I don't care. I'm going, to, I'm going to fight prejudice wherever I see it. And that's, of course, in his mind where he sees the prejudice. He says that those in charge at Deseret Book are making this about their predominantly straight white audience's feelings. And that misses the whole point of what they hired me to teach. So he finds it very ironic, right? That the very thing he's teaching is, is against what uh, the response was to him on this. Of course, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance in this, in understanding that, look, what you're doing, well, I guess I don't know that. I'm going to back up on that statement. I, I, I don't know that because I don't know enough about Deseret Book. I have plenty of concerns already about Deseret Book. My guess is there is a lot of sympathy toward the James Joneses of the world and, and, and what they want to teach. And then a, little, a few more words here before I get into the communication directly with, with Deseret Book. He says, a big problem with doing this is no progress is made. If you as a privileged person or organization are trying to do justice and reconciliation work, right? that is terminology of the social justice gospel, in a way that's palatable to you, you will never succeed. Well, what exactly is success to him? That would be my question. What is success to him? His success to him is implementation, indoctrination, and praxis, right, of, of critical race theory. That's, that's basically what it is, and, and anti-racism. Now, I want to put this out there because I think it's important that he says this, and, and so I want, to, I, want to, I want to make sure we hear this, right? He is a member of the church. He says, to be clear, I still sustain the brethren. Now, you may find that odd. You may find it, you know, whatever. That's fine. But I, 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 I want to at least put that out there. That he's, he's making that point. He says, I believe I sustain the brethren more than most because to not point out their attitudes and actions of prejudice undermines the work of the gospel and their authority. It breaks our covenants and it does harm to folks on the margins. Okay, again, this is all, this is all a part of the same type of social justice gospel that seeks to break down. That's what it's about. It is about revolution. It, it is about a, a massive change of systems. When we talk about systemic racism, what we're really talking about is we're going to use race to change the systems. We, we want to fight against a liberal democracy. You know, I'm not saying that about him, but, but, but more broadly, that is what the movement is trying to do. And, 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 and then... The most concerning thing here, imagine this gets out on a Deseret book and, and there is reference to President Nelson's words, right? Where he, we should lead out in abandoning attitudes and actions of prejudice. And then here is this anti-racism course that is teaching you critical race theory and teaching your kids critical race theory. And it's sold by Deseret book. Where do you go from there? What do, what do you do from that? Does the church then approve of critical race theory? Does the ch church believe in leftist tenets for solutions? Not that they've never been tried before, right? With absolutely horrendous results over and over and over and over again. And then lastly on this point, because again, I want to get back to the liberation theology just to touch on it for a second. He says, I sustain the brethren by holding them accountable to the Christ that leads this church and the Christ I see in our sacred texts, especially when any of the brethren, like Elder Holland, present a Christ nowhere to be found in those texts. Now, I don't know if he's talking specifically just about that talk or more broadly. I don't know if there is any contemporary man on earth who has given a better 
overall uh, presentation of Jesus Christ than Elder Holland. But the point here is, is what Christ does James Jones see? And, and he's, I, I, I believe, again, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. I'm just going off of some of the social media I've followed and a couple of other things that, um, that he sees a liberator, right? He sees a fighter over oppression. He sees a political messiah. Um, if that's not the case, uh, I, I don't know that absolutely. But the reason I'm willing to say that and bring that up is because this is how it is typically couched, right? Is, 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 is what is important. He talks a lot about justice and how justice is you know, so important within the gospel. And, and again, what he means by justice is not our judgment on right and wrong. What he means about justice is overthrowing oppression. And for those that follow deeply into Christianity, even within the church, and put that type of justice up above all, what you end up with is liberation theology, a political messiah. Now, into the communications that we get here with Deseret Book, because this is very enlightening. We see here that um, there, there's, these are emails that uh, actually were accessed by James Jones that he kept. And I have snapshotted those. And those were out and available for everybody publicly, that he has given that out publicly. Okay, So I did not grab these from anyone. James Jones has given them out publicly. You're, you're happy to go to his article, which I have linked in the YouTube description here. And, uh, and go to those on his Google Drive, if, if he keeps those up, and, and take a look at them. Here is the first email that he gets about the course, uh, that it's going to be withdrawn. He says, I'm the bearer. This is someone who is a content manager and producer at Deseret Book. And it has DeseretBook.com, right? This is definitely from Deseret Book. It says, hi, James. I'm the bearer of some bad news. I was informed that they are going to postpone putting your SEEK course. Remember, that's the new video and faith promotion courses. Your SEEK course up on the app for a little while longer, probably until sometime in late spring. As you know, it's all ready to go and looks great. The postponing is because of some of your content around Elder Holland's BYU speech in August. So it looks like that was part of the content against prejudice within the speech, within the within the uh, the course itself. So not only is it leftist, not only is it critical race theory, right? But within the the content of the course itself, it is criticizing at least Elder Holland, and, and I don't know if there's others in there or not, about him being prejudiced. And then this person says, I am relaying this message because I asked to be the one to let you know. I'm quite sad about it and still championing your voice and the importance of sharing your seek course and your words in general. Again, this is a manager inside of Deseret Book. In response to this, James Jones says, you're right that this isn't great news. And I'm going to extract a few lines here. I don't think that this is out of context at all. Again, you can go to this yourself and see it. He says, the decision misses the profound irony in deciding to put on hold a class titled Abandoning Attitudes and Actions of Prejudice because I criticized a leader's prejudice. So again, here, look at what the problem is here. It's not even the content, the anti-racist type of content, the leftist, hard leftist content that would be in here. But it is, it is because he criticized. If he wouldn't have criticized Elder Holland, would this have gone in? Would this have gone through? It looks like it would have. Based on this communication, it would have. I mean, think about... Did they reach out to him to begin with, knowing who he is and what he represents? So they were looking, it seems to me, whether there was an outline given by James Jones, if he initiated the the uh, the idea, or if Deseret Book came to James Jones and initiated the contact with him about writing a course about uh, prejudice. Either way, they've approved the course, they want the course, 
and they wanted to go forward. But you happen to say this thing about Elder Holland. That, that is secondary to me. The Elder Holland thing is completely secondary to me on, on the issue. It's not even close, in fact. The issue is the content that is being pushed at Deseret Book. He says, the decision betrays a lack of understanding of the course content. The decision demonstrates a higher value of what my voice can do for Deseret Book than my voice itself or outside of that. And, and you know, hey, feel pretty good about yourself, Mr. Jones, I guess. But what he's saying is, I need to get the social justice gospel out into the church. I don't know how you read that any differently. Now, there's one other correspondence here, one other email that solidifies that this isn't about the content, the anti-racist CRT content of the course. Rather, it is, it is about the criticism of Elder Holland. This is another manager or somebody else here at Deseret Book who says to Mr. Jones, so yes, Deseret Book is committed to upholding our church leaders whom the Lord has called. And we are committed to building and lifting those on the margins, including providing tools and resources to overcome racism and prejudice. We can and will do both. It sounds like we are at an impasse. And because we respect your right to use your voice as you choose, our intent isn't to persuade you otherwise. So again, the, the issue here is not the content of the course outside of a criticism of Elder Holland, it looks like. That's what they're zeroing in on. So here's my question. You have Deseret Book, and, and, and I've started to see more and more of this. I've seen Ibram Kendi sold at Deseret Book, right? How to be an anti-racist, a hard left radical that is, that is an, uh, authoring books on racism and, and on leftism that, is, that are being sold through Deseret Book. You have the same thing at the BYU bookstore. I just bought... Uh, this is also Ibram Kendi. So we have the young mothers at BYU that get to buy this at the BYU bookstore. I bought this online at the BYU bookstore. This is Ibram Kendi, anti-racist baby, right? So that is coming from, uh, by Ibram X. Kendi, and that is uh, available at BYU bookstores because it's never too early, right, to get your infants educated into an indoctrination of leftism. But, but my question is this, you have the CEO of Deseret Book, who is Sherry Dew, who I have an immense amount of respect for. How high up does that go at Deseret Book? Does she know about this course? She certainly knows about the SEEK program and the video courses that are going online within Deseret Book. I, I don't think there would be an initiative like that without her knowledge of it. Does she know about the course? Did she invite the course? Uh, does she know about the specifics of the course? Does she know who the author of the course was? Because at the manager level here, they certainly know who James Jones is. They certainly know about the anti-racist and social justice uh, uh, tenets that are being pushed here. So, so how far up does that go at Deseret Book? Now, lastly, I wanted to return to my little comment on, on liberation theology. Again, I'm going to beat this with like, like oh, just over and over again because the response I get is incredible on this. You don't believe that liberation theology is coming to the church. You don't believe it's coming to Christianity as a whole. And I'm telling you, it's going to overtake it. It's going to overtake Christianity as a whole, and it's going to make a massive impact on the church. The social justice gospel ends with liberation theology. And you've got to stop getting away from the idea of conservatives and liberals. And, and boy, Christians are more conservative and liberals are more secular. That is, that is an old paradigm. Liberation theology is about corrupting the gospel. It is about changing the very core of the gospel. And if you don't think it can happen, then you haven't read the Book of Mormon or at least understood it. You haven't read Isaiah. You haven't read Jeremiah. You haven't read the gospels. Liberation theology seeks to create a political Messiah, a liberator over the oppressors, a temporal Messiah, not an individual 
Savior of your sins. It pulls everything away from you personally and throws the problem to the oppressors. It removes your responsibility. Your shame and behavior don't matter anymore. What matters is the evil oppressors, and Christ is there to liberate you from them and from any systems that they create. This is the theme of the second book I'm putting out this year, is on liberation theology coming to the church and, and more broadly to Christianity. And how does that tie into all of this? It's because the social jo- justice gospel ends in liberation theology. That's where this ends up. And if we continue to allow this type of content into the church, and it's not like you don't want diverse ideas. You do want diverse ideas. We don't want everybody reading the manual in Sunday school and following things exactly like they, they did for a couple decades. That was, that was not a good move. That's not what Joseph Smith taught, right? But, but to, to allow and propagate, because it's propaganda, Right? The, 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 the social justice gospel and a liberation theology within the church is going to be unbelievably confusing to members of the church. And that's what that course would do. It's going to lead you right down that path. And of course, I find out, and, and looking a little bit more into James Jones and his social media, he is at the Union Theological Seminary, which is the hub of the social justice gospel. Right? He's getting his, his graduate degree there. Understand what this is and where this is. Right? Here's, here's the, uh, the headline of the Union Theological Seminary. The first thing that comes up. It's poverty, God, politics. <laughs> That's what it is. And so when you understand the social justice gospel, you understand that really what it is, it is a religion in and of itself. And it is a different Christianity. It is about politics. It is about poverty. It is about oppressors and oppressed. And its focus is on those things. It's not, its focus is not on an individual savior over your sins and on you growing and progressing individually through your own agency and responsibility. It is, I will take my responsibility and throw it over to whoever I can find or assign oppression to and put myself in as the victim. So here he is pursuing further the guy who was going to write this course, who wrote the course for Deseret Book, is studying specifically, specifically studying liberation theology at the Union Theological Seminary. Please pay attention to these things. This is not a small little movement. Not at all. There are very prominent members of the church that completely support what he is doing. And I hope I can make you just a little bit more aware of these things.